We're going to focus on the relationship between the trade weighted index and the net foreign debt of Australia. Now, as we've talked about before, the trade weighted index is the average value of the AUD. The average value of the AUD. So it's measured against a basket of other currencies and is weighted according to the relative importance of the foreign currency. And the net foreign debt is the accumulated debt. To foreign, to foreigners, to foreign countries. So we, as we talked about before in the, the lecture on the relationship between the net foreign debt and the current account deficit, the current account deficit is only the day-to-day -day yearly, or commonly yearly, debt accrued by residents to non-residents, where it um, goes back to zero after each year. But the net foreign debt is accumulated through multiple years until it is paid off by residents who owe money overseas. So now we're going to see how the trade weighted index or our currency can affect the net foreign debt. So as we know, there is a two-way relationship between the net foreign debt and the trade weighted index. So we're going to look at Firstly, the relationship between the trade weighted index and the net foreign debt. We're going to see how a change in the trade weighted index can affect our net foreign debt. So for simplicity reasons, we're going to assume that China is the only trading partner of Australia and that China's yuan is the only currency in our trade weighted index, just for simplicity reasons. But if we use this example, we can come back to the theory of how change in the trade weight index can affect the net foreign debt. So as we know, the debt is paid to Chinese residents, and Chinese residents don't want Australian dollars because it's useless to them. They can't spend Australian dollars in China. So what they require is Chinese yuan. So our net foreign debt is measured in overseas currencies. And let's say our net foreign debt is actually a hundred billion to be more Let's call it, yeah, 100 billion yuan. And as we know, at the moment, the net foreign debt is around 60 billion Australian dollars. So this is a very much an unrealistic example, but it gives you, um, it gives us a basic understanding of how the trade weight index can affect the net foreign debt of Australia. So this is a purely theoretical example that I'm posing for this lecture. So a net foreign debt is 100 billion yuan. And as we know, one at the moment, one AUD, so one AUD, can trade around five yuan or renminbi. So if we convert this back to Australian dollars, the hundred billion dollar, um, hundred billion yuan debt that we've accrued over the years is in fact only a hundred divided by five equals twenty billion AUD. So to pay off this debt, uh, Australian residents need to find 20 billion somewhere of Australian dollars, convert it to RMB using this exchange rate there to pay off our net foreign debt. Okay. So let's assume that the Australian dollar depreciates. So this is a bad thing for us. So the Australian dollar depreciates from 1 AUD to 5 RMB, to 1 AUD, to only 4 RMB. So 1 Australian dollar now can only buy us 4 Chinese yuan. So if we use the same calculations here, the 100 billion yuan debt is now worth 25 billion AUD. Even though the debt has not changed, it's still stated a billion yuan, we can see that we require more Australian dollars to pay off this same debt. So as the trade weighted index decreases, so the index number decreases, it is assumed that our net foreign debt, or to pay off our net foreign debt, would increase. Although the actual net foreign debt has not changed from before. So using the same example, if one AUD now pays around eight. RMB, 
for whatever reason um, on the either fixed or floating exchange rate market, the Australian dollar appreciates from 1 AUD to 5 RMB to 1 AUD to 8 RMB. We can see the calculations work the same. And now we only require around 12.5 billion Australian dollars to pay off the same 100 billion yuan in debt. So it is favorable for the trade weighted index to appreciate so that our net foreign debt can be paid off more quickly. Now secondly we're going to look at how the net foreign debt can affect the trade weighted index. So we talked about um, the, the, the ledger or the goal of external stability being having a sustainable NFD. And we don't know what sustainable means, but we know that sustainable entails sort of being able to pay off our debt at a timely rate. It doesn't mean that our debt is zero. It means that our debt is somewhat payable from our existing financial situation. So let's assume a situation where a large and sustainable increase in net foreign debt occurs. So we're not investing, so there is no investment. We're using debt to pay off debt. And this is very, very bad for the Australian economy because it means that we're borrowing money not to fund productive investments or projects, but we're borrowing money to pay off more money. And as we know interest occurs, we're just going to fall into a deeper cycle of debt. And so what this means is that there will be even greater interest repayments abroad. And as we know, we have to exchange the Australian dollar to RMB each time that we want to pay off debt. We can see that when the net foreign debt increases, to keep it sustainable, we have um, exchange rate here. To keep it sustainable, we need to start paying off the debt. And what this means is that we would tend to purchase more Chinese yuan in the market, on the exchange rate market. And to do that, we must increase the supply of Australian dollars into the market. So what happens when our net foreign debt increases is that Australian government will tend to purchase more of the foreign currency to pay off our debt because we don't want it to be unsustainable. We want it to be sustainable so that we meet our international financial obligations. What this means is that the equilibrium or the fundamental exchange rate would decrease from E1 to E2. So as we see, when net foreign debt increases, the trade weighted index tends to, tends to decrease. And also by the same token, when the net foreign debt decreases, we have less financial obligations, therefore the supply of Australian dollars within the financial market will go down, or the international foreign exchange market will go down, and therefore the value of the dollar would appreciate. So here's there's a relationship between the trade weighted index and the net foreign debt. So to recap, when our dollar appreciates against a basket of foreign currencies, then the net foreign debt would tend to decrease. But at the same time, if our trade weighted index depreciates, our net foreign debt would increase for all the reasons that we've talked about before. And the second relationship, how our, an increase in our net foreign debt can lead to a decrease in the trade weighted index, and similarly a decrease in the net foreign debt can lead to an increase in the trade weighted index.